What's up, guys and gals? I'm your host, Mike Pugh of the FTC Virtual Channel, and you're tuning in to my virtual set. This is going to be one of those things that are somewhat unique, and it will bring you something different every time I have to offer a video. I promise that part. Now, where did I create this? I actually created it on Adobe Dimension, and I used the Adobe Creative Cloud in order to create it. If y'all folks are looking to try to create something like this for your videos, something 100% totally virtual except yourself, then definitely come check it out. All right, so I'm gonna load up Adobe Dimension and I'll talk a little bit about what Adobe Dimension is. Adobe Dimension is an actual tool that you can use to render your 3D assets on a very, very high scale and quality. So that's what Adobe Dimension is. If you have any kind of 3D assets or you want to render something in 3D, maybe a photo and merge it onto a 3D asset, a 3D object, you can bring it into Adobe Dimension and you can really, really work on it to make that visual look photo realistic. So it's, it's really, really awesome. The high definition on the renders are pretty, pretty dope. <laughs> I'm gonna use that term dope because that's what I determine for myself. Now, these are a bunch of projects that I worked on. I'm just gonna show you the latest one that I did, which was yesterday I finished it. Um, that was the one that you saw, but this is an evolution of it. So if y'all folks, like I said, y'all wanna stay with me and check out to see how I did this. Um, it's gonna be a, an actual series. So this is just the intro to Adobe Dimension from my channel on FPC Virtual. You can also look in the search field on YouTube and obviously you can search, type in Adobe Dimension and you can find a lot of videos. I don't think there's tons of them out there because Adobe Dimension only been live for about two weeks. So it's not that widespread all across the online world in general, but this is something that you definitely can use if you're someone who is into like business and you like to work on product development and you want to display your products to your team in a very very high level scale in terms of the definition of the pixel quality you want to render those pixels on a high scale you definitely can go for adobe dimension what i recommend for you to do though is to at least have an i7 processor on your pc at least an i7. I have an i5 and my computer is having some difficulties rendering. So um, that's just an idea. Um, you probably wanna get a gaming computer or a workstation. If you have a huge budget, you can go for a workstation, try to get about 16 to 32 gigabytes of RAM. Try to go for that high scale RAM so that your memory can be freed up and you can actually deliver to the screen. The highest resolution renders what less problems. Like right now I'm having trouble and it's not even displaying the render that well at all. See, it just now came out. I don't know why that took so long to come out, but it's not rendering right now. It's actually displaying the project that I worked on. So say I wanted to render this, it's gonna take a very, very long time because I have eight gigs of RAM on my actual PC. I have an Asus G11 gaming computer, but it's still not that powerful compared to what it needs to be in order to be compatible to this actual software. I should have at least an i7 processor. I have an i5, like I said. So it does have some compatibility issues. You can actually rotate and do everything to view most of the things that are showcased here, but there's limitations. So all these differing things I'm going to talk about in terms of the tools. I'm not going to talk about the limitation. I'll just talk about the tools because I haven't discovered all the limitations, but one of my major ones is rendering. Up here you have file, edit, object, image, view, window, and help. What I'm going to do, I'm going to be using my smartphone to control the screen. So I may look down a great deal of time. So try to ignore that. What you're seeing is the differing options to control the software. So file, edit, object, image view window and help you can use any of those if you chose what i found is that i used object 
frequently when I was trying to group objects together. So you can tap that, you can group objects, you can ungroup objects. What that means is that if you have multiple assets of 3D objects, maybe a wall, maybe um, like I have these LED signs that are down there that look like flat screen TVs. Those are LED signs. I turn them into flat screen TV looking things because I wanted to create a virtual set. If you have like a table, a chair, floor, if you build a floor or a ceiling, whatever you build, you can group those objects together. And how you can do that is from over here on the right, wherever there's an object. See, this is a group right here. If you click it, click the down, the, the little arrow to the right, you'll see what's grouped together. And then you can scroll through all that. Let's try to scroll down a little bit. You see that all these boxes are tied together. So on the left, you have your tools here. These tools will allow you to grab objects and allow you to highlight objects and pretty much to select whatever 3D object you want that you put into your scene, into your actual 3D viewer, and you'll be able to manipulate them how you see fit. See, so those are highlighted. So let's click that arrow again and then put that into the group folder it basically slides everything up. So say I wanted to group this LED sign with something else, I can do that. You just have to highlight each one. You can use your, your control key on your keyboard if you're using a Microsoft computer um, and then the equivalent for Mac. I'm not sure which key that is on a Mac actual keyboard, but pretty much that's what you have to do. Say you wanted to scale an object up you're gonna use that box within a box, which is right below the select move tool. So that's that. And then you'll grab at, in order to scale everything up within the same size, respective size, you have to use that little small white triangle. If you wanna scale on a specific plane, you would have to use that plane, the, the yellow, the green, or the red, whichever one you see fit. Under that, it will be the select and rotate tool. You can choose that and that will allow you to rotate on a specific plane. So you can rotate on the X, Y, or Z axis. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to scroll back in so I can show you all that. But um, I'm not going to try to manipulate too much because I don't want to mess up and ruin my project. This is the hand tool, which allows you to drag the actual screen, the full entire screen itself, with everything intact, you can drag it to the right or left or up and down, which is pretty cool and handy when you're trying to focus on a particular object at a specific viewpoint. So what we're going to do is try to rotate. We go back to that rotate tool and say we wanted to rotate on the red axis. That's probably the Y axis. I'm not sure. Or it may be the, the, uh, Z. I'm not really too sure which axis that is, but um, say you wanted to rotate on it, it's going to allow you to rotate the object like that, like so. Actually, this is rotating all axes. Wow, interesting. Not just the Z. Now, say you wanted to go back, say you made an a error, you could hit the back button up there in the upper right corner and go to undo. And that fixes that particular error that you made. Maybe you adjusted it too far and you wanted to get back to that origin point. That's really important because the origin point is something that it will really, really throw you off if you put your, if you position that object in maybe one degree, three degrees difference from the specific original axis or origin point that you meant it to actually lay at. So say you tapped it by mistake and threw it off course, well, undo definitely will fix that. Under that rotation tool, there's an actual tool that I never used. And this one is the magic wand tool. Very similar to a magic wand tool that you would find in Photoshop, but it doesn't do the same thing. It says intelligently select smaller pieces of complex objects. So maybe you have, you know, a human object that you chose to put in there, maybe um, a 3D character graphic design that you built 
the 3D model and you wanted to grab the eyeballs or something like that, or color the eyeballs. I don't know, whatever you want to do, I think that magic tool would help you do that. I never used it before though. So don't quote me on that, but I believe that's something similar to what you, you would use that for. And then you got the sampler tool. Sample and apply materials to objects. So you can actually merge, like I have a graphic on here. That's my FPC virtual logo, 3D logo, whatever. You can merge logos onto 3D objects as actual PNG files if you chose to do that. Just make sure that they have transparency activated. So maybe you created it on Photoshop as a transparency, saved it as a PNG, got rid of the, the, the background, right? allowed it to have the transparent background and you merged it on here to put your logo and wrap your logo over some sort of a 3d object it could be a cup it could be a box it could be sneakers it could be shirt it can be anything that you chose whatever you choose to merge in as a 3d object you can overlay it on top of it and that's pretty awesome so that's that tool and then under right below that is the orbit tool the orbit tool will allow you to rotate the whole entire scene. So let's select that so y'all folks can, can see that particular aspect. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna back out, zoom out a little bit so you can see the full rotation. So we click here, make sure that's clicked and you'll see that little round icon with the ball and the arrow in it. Then you can just tap the screen and you can rotate this is me going up and down on the screen I'm using my mouse using the Google Chrome remote uh, desktop app to control my computer so you can do that as well I'll be doing that a lot while I'm doing these tutorials because I'm not actually at my mouse on my keyboard so I just wanted y'all folks to check that out just to see how that will work and then again the hand tool which is very useful like I said say you wanted to center something in the dead center of the screen you can do it like so and then the one below that which I've been using multiple times is the zoom allows you to zoom in and out without changing any of the effects that you brought into your scene or any objects positional op locations then you have the horizon tool where you can fix where you want your horizon to be sitting at which works well when you're zoomed out and you can look at the object and see where you want to center your objects or your scene into the actual field. Um, now we can go into more in-depth stuff, but I'll be doing that in some other tutorials to show y'all folks how to control the properties, how to add, delete, how to merge um, third-party files in, like from a, maybe a free 3D object website or something like that. I'll be bringing more tutorials to the plate so y'all folks can learn that kind of stuff. But I just wanted y'all folks to see um, this is actually the tool that I'm using and I just wanted to give you a basic walkthrough as to how some of the tools actually work. Um, now when it comes to being able to showcase this to an audience, like I was able to create my virtual set, what you want to do is use the render option. Now rendering requires you to have a very, very high level PC. When I say high level, I mean at least the i7 processor. Um, I have an i5, but I have a gaming computer and my actual um, video card, capture card is, is pretty powerful. So NVIDIA, uh, something of nine level, 960, 980, I don't know the exact number. I could look on the actual computer for that, but that's beside the point. You definitely wanna have a strong high level NVIDIA or some sort of video card. And you wanna have uh, either a gaming computer or a workstation. If you don't have that, nine times out of 10, you won't be able to even meet the specifications that are required in order to be compatible to this tool. So getting Adobe Creative Cloud itself wouldn't work for you if you wanted to get this tool for Adobe Dimension to bring out your dimensions, to create your virtual sets or whatever you wanna do um, and virtual assets, projects, materials, um, products if you wanna launch do product launches and display to your team and pretty much showcase to buyers or whatever you wanted to do. You're not going to be able to do any of that stuff if your PC, your hardware is not up to scale to meet the demand for this actual software. And I'll put in the bottom of this video's description area a link for y'all folks to get to the requirements for that compatibility so you can actually 
be able to meet the specifications. And um, other than that, that's all I got for now. I'll be doing, like I said, a more in-depth tutorial showing y'all folks much more on how to work the files, how to get in and out of differing options that you need to merge things, import, export stuff, um, export, rendering on a much higher level. I'll be doing that as well. This particular computer is having issues with rendering right now. So I may have to actually upgrade my computer in order to do much higher level um, renders. But for now, I was able to get what I got. I have some other stuff that I'll show y'all folks. Probably try to do it after I do this. I'll save it and then try to add it to the video. So it comes out as a nice package. So um, let's go back to the virtual set. I'm just going to OBS. I'm using OBS by the way. So if y'all folks wanna get into removing your background and learning how to you know, create these differing scenes, I'll help y'all folks to do that. Um, I've already put up a lot of videos for OBS. So the Open Broadcasting Software Studio is the tool that I'm using. It's a free open source tool. There's no strings attached to it. And it has unlimited capacity for you to go far in terms of you being able to deliver high quality for people in a visual format. So as you can see, this is pretty, pretty high quality. Um, I'm doing my best with it. Um, right now, I'm having some issues with my green screen removal for my hat it has a little yellowish or green around it. Um, having little issues with my lighting positioning, you can see the shadow because I have a light bulb right there. I can shut off the light bulb and you'll see the difference. That looks pretty decent too. I could have left it like that, but I want to play around with different lighting situations so I can see if I can pull out more pixels for my green screen background removal. So um, other than that, that's all I got for y'all folks today. If y'all, like I said, you want to get more information on how to remove your backgrounds or to improve your background removal so you can actually pull off this virtual set, you can create your own shows, you can do a lot of stuff. Um, pretty much check out my, my YouTube channel. You can look at the playlist that I have in the bottom of this video's description area. It's gonna be for OBS. I merge other people's OBS videos. So if they're more expert than me, more knowledgeable or whatever, I put their videos in there so it could help more people also so I could find it as well. Other than that, I'm out of here. Joe love and peace to all. Feel free to share my videos socially if you feel it's going to impact somebody in a positive way and help them to step up to the table, step up to the plate and do something with online communications or whatever. Feel free to subscribe. Like I said, if you want to keep up with the series and feel free to hit the thumbs up if you like the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Here we go, folks. This was my actual blue face and Bugatti. I put a cape on the blue face guy. I created him using Adobe Fuse. And it was pretty dope, the creation, the development process on creating him. I used um, Adobe Dimension to try to bring him into the 3D world. You can see he's full 3D. And that's pretty cool, right? So this is my first character. I actually tried to animate him using Adobe Character Animator CC 2018. And I'll be doing some tutorials on that and bringing y'all folks into it, doing a walkthrough first. And if y'all folks want to catch any more videos that I have to offer, you can hit the in the upper right corner or left corner, wherever you see those little um, windows that come up with the videos. And you can also click the circle to subscribe, like I said, to get my latest. And um, Hit that bell icon if you want to get my most recent ones. And that's all I got. Peace.